I'm Teng Sin Vesh. We'll talk about investing, finance, and professional development for today's terms only. The investment going to talk today will be Thim TVTH. So my second post like of today. Respect to recording time of 2.28 p.m. on the Eastern Time. The Thim country $4,212. That's about 3% so far. With respect to the overall crypto market, let's take a look at it real quick. You can see that clearly on the left corner, we are relatively red today, right? With the equity side reversing, you know, ever since the sell off that we've had earlier this morning, uh, with, respect, with respect to the bond use spiking all over again, and also some disappointing earnings results that happen among the consumer retail sector stocks as well. And also, like if you look closely onto the equity side as well, we also see some sector rotation happening again uh, with respect to some of the high growth small cap stocks. Um, more prominently display on the technology sector, it seems like there are some buying activities among the hedge fund community today um, ahead of the obviously the market closing tomorrow is Thanksgiving tomorrow. And I believe on Friday is also um, a day off for the uh, equity market as well. <clears throat> and talk about Thanksgiving, I just had a wonderful, wonderful lunch. Uh, so this is like this chicken joint that just opened up a block away from me. Uh, they make, and they're like a specialist on the Korean fried chicken. Uh, it's like a like a mom and pop shop, uh, not like a like a franchise, if you may, like the Bom Chong, you know, if you know what I'm talking about, if you guys are domestically from the US. Um, this was just so delicious. Like, wow, I had a whole chicken. It wasn't that crazy expensive. It was like about 18 bucks for a whole chicken. And I just like, ate the whole thing in the last 20 minutes with like fries on the side they have like this little salad and they also gave like this mixed rice which i also have here that i didn't didn't get to finish yet it's like some radish like a crucial mom next to it man that was delicious like I, i'll probably go back again um and it doesn't it doesn't quite make sense why i'm eating today uh or having a whole chicken i typically you know, on Thanksgiving, you know, unlike most Americans, which have turkey for Thanksgiving, <laughs> which, you know, is obvious, uh, we actually just have rotisserie chicken, like from Boston Market or one of those like rotisserie chicken joints that we see locally. Uh, but seems like my Thanksgiving uh, celebration by myself uh, came a little early. I mean, ultimately, our family don't really celebrate Thanksgiving. So it is what it is, uh, but we appreciate the day off. Uh, that we collectively have. Uh, my whole family's off tomorrow. So let's just take a look at the news quick. Uh, news uh, real quick. Sorry for going off tangent again. It's just that my chicken lunch was so good. <laughs> so with respect to the news front, uh, let's talk about some of the uh, recent uh, activities that we've been uh, capturing for the last six hours so far. Uh, so out of all, I would say collectively, it's just a lot more reminding news, talk about what happened what's been happening historically. So let's just go through them chronologically. There's one specific one that's uh, more substantive than other. So with respect to the first one on 31 minutes ago on Bitcoin is, what's the reason behind the plummeting um, uh, or sell-off that we've been experiencing across the market right now? Obviously, again, right, with respect to the technicals, is something we've been talking about. It's also some mixture with respect to some of the macro driven news right ever since the passing of the infrastructure bill that was the first one and a sec second large catalyst was with respect to china mining crackdown more reinforcing news around their um you know regrettable consequences that you know if china was to find out any corporations or private entity to be mining crypto in the mainland china um there will be some serious consequences and i think the serious consequences are uh, in their the way they characterize is something, some sort of like regrettable um, consequence. I don't know what that really means, but I think that's really, uh, uh, you know, a term, uh, aka as uh, execution or even death penalty or life sentence, if you may. I know like it's a little bit um, severe, but it is what it is, right? And also with respect to the next macro catalyst was with respect to uh, Joe Biden's nomination for uh, Jerome Powell to be uh, to to be uh, going on to the second term as the chairman of uh, obviously the Federal Reserve, right? So with that affectation, it drives some pump in the preliminary perspective 
ahead of the nomination, and then subsequent to that, the market kind of rallied from there. But because of of the fact that you know inflation is still in the talks, right? Uh, and there's still some uh, disappointment around the consumer retail sector stocks. And also bond yield spikes again, uh, triangulate between the job numbers. Obviously, the consumer retail earnings result has some correlation to it. It's currently translating to the current level of down about 3% at the current moment right now. Uh, the next news on Bazinga about two hours ago, talk about Ethereum miner high blockchain signals bullet reversal. What's next? So this is basically depicting around the cup and handle that uh, many analysts are saying that we are, but ultimately it's still you know non-confirmatory. We still like forming a head. We still have like this scoop, but is this like a shoulder or a scoop, right? We do have another shoulder that's here right now as well. So something we have to watch, but ultimately we are in the business of risk mitigation. We're triangulating between multiple factors, right? From the technicals to the news to the quantitative analysis, to, you know, basically look at the risk management levels as well. Excuse me, my chicken's coming back up. <laughs> Excuse me, so... Oh, so much gas right now. Uh, and then next news on Bazinga about two hours ago, talk about this big US investment bank. And this investment bank is Morgan Stanley specifically, actually. is doubling down on its Bitcoin investments exposure. So it seems like they are buying the dips. Uh, that we've been seeing so far. So Morgan Stanley is one of the biggest institutional um, investor, but also a biggest one of the biggest U.S. bank as well. Uh, so it seems like they are following the footsteps of obviously J.P. Morgan, Goldman Sachs, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and I think Citibank as well, onto having some exposure uh, into the balance sheets um, and also on the uh, institutional clients. Uh, management side on the wealth management arm as well. <clears throat> and then next one's uh, coin desk about three hours. So we talk about just uh, El Salvador uh, ambassador to the U.S. on Central American countries' Bitcoin ambition. So basically, this is a uh, uh, on Reuters uh, a news, uh, not news, like a interview that they were having uh, talking to this lady named uh, Melina Mayoga. I think I'm saying her name correctly. She's basically talking about the uh, foreseeable uh, adoption across the entire Central American region. You know, right now, El Salvador has confirmed, obviously from the president, right? Uh, but it seems like there are more cultivation and more expansion uh, of adoption. Um, seems like it's all working out with El Salvador, calling the Bitcoin city. Um, so more great activities. Uh, Central America is definitely... You know, a large region of the world, um, and with that adoption, we see great things among, you know, the political ecosystem. And with that being said, uh, more emergence will be coming as we politically expand to other countries as well. Obviously, in North America, and to other part of the Euro country as well. And then, um, Coin Telegraph on the next level is uh, five hours ago. Talk about with respect to the current level seems seriously cheap, and that's basically what they're talking about with respect to Bitcoin price. And right now is uh, around like fifty six thousand um, dollars. And some of the analysts are saying that we are seriously cheap. I mean, we know how cheap we are uh, in the RSI in the MACD perspective. We've been talking about we're in an okay level. We're not like seriously cheap again. More media affectation, try to spin things to influence people. Um, they also talk about with respect to Ethereum, the current level is uh, at an okay level, right? But they say seriously cheap as well, at the like around 4,150. So uh, again, we have to read it with a grain of salt. We mentally adjust for it. And ultimately, we will do the technical analysis in a bit to look at what we're really seeing in front of us. <clears throat> The next one's on but on on Barons talk about again right with respect to the in India, they plan to uh, ban crypto because uh, of the some of the regulatory pressures I've been seeing so far is something we already talked about this morning, and then the last news that I see on CNBC about eight hours ago is talk about the company Stripe the startup right uh, is uh, expecting to open to accepting crypto for payments, <clears throat> so uh, something that we heard from John Callis Collison which is the president and co-founder of Stripe, which is something we talked about earlier this morning.
<coughs> Excuse me. So sector film right now we are down about two point seven five percent. Still hovering away. Uh, try to sustain. Do we go up or do we go down from here? It seems like we are just trading on sideways fashion. Getting some anti correlation effects from the equity side as well. We are the 47 out of 70. So ideally to dollar cost average, you know, if you want to buy now, it's fine. Just do it because um, just hold it for a long term. We expect much higher level for Ethereum respectively. But for me, because I do have a large position already, I'll just wait until the RSI cools back down to below 35 all over again, which technically translates to the 3,850 to 3,475 from here. Respect to Bitcoin right now, we are contemplating do we break it to the next level of the 52,600 or the 48, right? And I think with respect to the current level of the 41 out of 70, um, <clears throat> that translates well, right? I think the, the frame of in, incurring risk for myself is still within the level that we've identified so far. <clears throat> Dogecoin is a buy right now. It's down about 5% right now. We're at the 37 out of 70. So you know what that means. Ideally, dollar cost averaging from the current level all the way to the bottom, basically at the 1950 from here. Cardano is down to 161. You can see that we sold off a little bit more in comparison to early posting that we've had this morning, right? So we are going to head down all the way to the 145, which is the next technical level. But right now, we're very oversold with the 29 out of 70, obviously because of the um, banning news uh, on eToro uh, with respect to Cardano. So I think this is a dip. I, I don't think this is... Um, obviously, we do have a leap down right now. Uh, I think, you know, if you are one of those that actually believe in a long time value proposition of Cardano, today is a really good Black Friday sales, if you may. It came early. Solana is down about 10% right now. So, again, right at the 133 to 113 is still the dip for us to buy. XRP at the 101 right now. So, the dip is at the moment right now. I think, do we see breaking down to the next level? If we break $1, we're going to go to the 93 cents. Right, but I don't think we're going to get anywhere close to it, maybe to the 95, that will be possible. But I think right now is actually a good buy for us to incur some dip on XRP at the moment. And I, I got some questions around, like, XRP is not on uh, Coinbase, nor is it on uh, Robinhood or something like that, right? I believe it's on Binance, so feel free to check it out to see. Um, I'm, I'm sure that there are other portals that allows you to transact on XRP. Polkadot's right now down 7.11%. Uh, again, buy it somewhere around like the 33 all the way to the 25 is still the dip from here. Algorand's down about 3% right now. Um, again, at the 160 to 152 is still the dip. So we have some room to fall down to right now with an okay level, 44 out of 70. Shiba Inu is coming to coming true. We are going heading to the 2750. I know it sounds really magical that we're... every that is all coming true. It's just because the technical has been saying so the whole time. It's just about believing the technicals. The technicals never lies. It's always honest to us, right? People lie, media lies, um, but the technicals always tells the truth if you know and you have a lie detector in your methodology of how you apply to transact, right? So again, the 2750 to the 900 is still the dip, right? Uh, based on the technicals right now. So respect to risk management levels, uh, to dollar cost average, these are the levels I would, you know, ideally incur risk on. Um, and I think some of the levels are already in right now. So feel free to incur risk at your own um, risk, obviously, at your own risk tolerance as well. And I uh, really appreciate you for dropping by again on this uh, Wednesday, right? Um, I think I'm having some itis right now from eating the whole chicken in 20 minutes uh, but it was delicious like oh my god that was delicious um i actually my dad actually has a portion as well so i'm probably gonna eat his leftover as my I, you know stomach digest a little bit more first i don't want to be too aggressive with eating so much um <clears throat> even though i'm not really going to like any thanksgiving dinner tomorrow probably get like a rotisserie chicken as well like how we do it every single year maybe get kfc a bucket of kfc or Popeyes, that's also good. Oh, Jollibee's. Ooh, Jollibee sounds good. Um, as you can know, I'm a very big fan of fried chicken or just chicken in, in general. Uh, but yeah, the next time I'll see you guys will be Thanksgiving. So I hope you guys have a good, safe flight in case you are commuting or flying to see your family and your loved ones. 
And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow on your Thanksgiving holidays. And uh, for those that are, you know, on the international side of the house, have a good rest of the day. And I look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. Take care. Bye.